Well, he might be one of two because there were two Ball brothers on the floor last night. Of course, in Chicago, Lonzo for the Bulls and Lamelo for the Hornets. And there was one possession, or sort of two possessions, that really just showed the brilliance of these two players. It is first Lonzo Ball. You see him in the corner there, getting an open pass, knocking down a three, and then just with no break in the action, Lamelo takes the ball out. You know, a little drive from Bridges, kicks it back out, and then Lamelo hits a three right there as well. Back to back Ball brothers. Jalen, I love seeing this sibling rivalry play out in high school, overseas, and now here it is, right on an NBA stage. I love it so very much, especially since there only been approximately 4,000 people to ever play in an NBA game. It always has been impressive to me, whether it's the Currys, the Plumleys, the Holidays, I could go on and on about the brothers that have siblings, not only in the NBA, in, but in professional sports. But there are not many starting point guard jobs in the NBA. It's only 30 teams. And for you to have two sons both doing that, getting great contracts and have great careers happening, uh, it's really remarkable uh, for, for their parents and for their family. But in last night's game, how about Vucevic? Like mm -hmm. he's always been a scorer and a guy that could get you that 20 and 10 in particular in Orlando. But adding that three ball, didn't miss from three land. And like I told you, DeRozan and Levine, they're going to be 20, 25 every night. It's just about the efficiency. So the Bulls, again, for a lot of people, seem to be a surprise. They'll come back to the pack some. They're not going to be a top three team in the Eastern Conference, but they have a legitimate chance to be number four or so. And it's great to watch how they continue to mature and grow as a, as a roster. Now, listen, I'm not going to sit here and lie into a microphone. I may have had some not nice things to say about LeVar Ball during the sort of peak of his popularity, <laughs> and I may have doubted the success of all of his sons, but guess what? I was wrong, and he was at the game last night with a hat on that says, I told you so. He's got a hat on that says, I told you so, and a picture of two of his sons on his sweatshirt, along with his wife, Tina, who has dealt with some health issues. Just put yourself in the head of LeVar Ball. What's he thinking right now? It's an incredible feeling, Jacoby, and I told you so is exactly right because he did just that. And he and his wife, Tina, have done a terrific job of nurturing young men who are not only productive NBA players, but a quality young men. And so I also thought about the fact that I didn't see them necessarily front row in Los Angeles or at Pelicans games or even in Charlotte. That was in Chicago. And so that stood out to me. But again, I'm really happy for them. I'm really happy for their family. And he's come on this show with LaMelo while he was in high school and let us know that these guys had game. He was exactly right. I told you so was right. Well, they weren't the only brothers in an NBA arena last night. Very famously, the Jokic brothers accompanied the king, <laughs> the stretch like mark five, did, did. to the NBA arena in Miami because, of course, last time these two teams played, we know what happened. But nothing, nothing sort of crazy happened during this one except for Jokic's performance where they handled the heat pretty easily. They did, and since we're on the brothers team, you know, the Morris brothers also obviously got tangled up with Jokic and whatnot. And one of them wasn't playing. Tyler Hero wasn't playing. Jimmy Butler wasn't playing. But how complete of an offensive weapon is our king, our guy, before he went mainstream, the Joker, this year's reigning MVP. So you lose Michael Porter Jr., now all of a sudden, Everybody just moving. Everybody just cutting. Aaron Gordon getting dunks. Will Barton making plays. Monte Morris making plays. Without the heat, with the heat being shorthanded, this is still a quality win by the Denver Nuggets. You know, they played so well in the bubble. You remember that run that they went on. And last year, obviously, Murray went down. And now we get this news about Michael Porter Jr., who's out indefinitely. It just feel I feel bad for the reigning MVP because with Porter Jr. out and Murray, still no real timetable when he'll be back, although he is working out. Is this the season for the Nuggets already? Unfortunately, Jacob, you can't truly be a contending team for a championship or even in the Western Conference not knowing Jamal Murray's health and now without Michael Porter Jr. I mean, you need that big three in order to really chase your goals. And it's really unfortunate for the Nuggets, who've done a terrific job of putting themselves in position to be one of the best teams in the West. 
Yep, well, we hope that Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray can get healthy and they can get back on the court alongside our king, the stretch mark five, Nikola Jokic. But of all the players that were in action last night, no one had a better night than... Jonas Valanciunas for the Pelicans in a win. My man had seven threes in the first the half. Pelican he finished line. seven for eight from three. Jalen, if you hit seven threes in the first half, how do you only take one in the second half? I agree, Jacoby. And by the way, this is a testament to the big fella continue to work on his game. We show Vucevic expanding his range. You see Valanciunas expanding his range. Brooke Lopez is a guy that didn't shoot many threes his first six or seven years. The new era of big man that can still get you now. How about this? There are two players this year in the NBA that have scored 35 points and had 10 boards while making seven threes in the game. Steph Curry and JV did it last night against the Clippers. The progression of the big man in today's NBA. A seven for eight from three is absolutely wild to me. If I'm one of his teammates, I'm getting him the ball in the second half. Now, obviously, they were ahead, so he didn't play crunch time. But still, big shout to Valanciunas, someone who NBA casuals may have forgotten. Lonzo's Bulls, they were playing each other for the first time all season. And, you know, if they're playing, that also means LeVar Ball has to be oh, who doesn't Richard. have a set of balls going against each other? <laughs> Richard, onto the court. Onto the court. Here we go. And look, this game was so this game was back and forth watching them just go. There was multiple lead changes in this Charlotte Chicago game. But you know what happened? Ultimately the Chicago Bulls revved it up. The final three, four minutes of that first half, it was all Chicago Bulls as you see this finish right here. Well, and you know who was instrumental in revving it up for the Hornets? It was yeah. Batman right there. It was Batman. And look, I love what I love about him is that his team got down like 20 plus points, but they kept battling back. You see this, look, down 20. And DeMar DeRozan was continuing his show, doing what he does, showing that he is the best player on that Chicago Bulls team. DeMar DeRozan had 28 points on the night. Let's fast forward to the fourth quarter where it really went down. Well, and look at this. This 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 is a six-point game now. They cut Ooh. it to four with seven to go. That shows you that this Charlotte team is real. You're down 20 on the road against the Bulls and you keep fighting, but it was too much of the big fella. Vucevic is back. This man went seven for seven from three. We're not even talking about all the layups. But then that was it. Too much defense. And I'm just going to say this, Lonzo. If this is what you're going to do and lay it up, give it to Zach. I messed you up. I Zach. messed you up. I think it was six for six. 16 oh. points for Lonzo. 18 points for Lamelo. Here's Damn what it. they said after the game. <laughs> Obviously, you know, we, we are brothers and it's all love off the court. But on the court, like I said, he, he got a job he got to do. I got a job I got to do with both, you know, big parts of our team. So, you know, he came in and played as hard as he could. I played as hard as I could. And I'm still a big brother at the end of the day. And I got to stack my wins. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I always go out and, I mean, we've been talking about the NBA since we were little boys. So, you know, just going out there playing against them. Having moms and pops in the crowd watching. Just all around a blessing. All right, we got to bring in J.J. Redick with the beautiful New York skyline in the background there. All right, so both Ball brothers are now in good situations. And, J.J., I want to start with you here, though. Who would you rather have as you're looking towards their outlook and building a franchise of those two brothers? Well, LaMelo, for sure. Hmm. Um, and, and I would say this. The Bulls are built for short-term success right now. You certainly have to look at Zach Levine's upcoming free agency and how that plays out. But the Hornets have two foundational pieces in LaMelo Ball and Miles Bridges, who's made a big jump this year. LaMelo, to me, is a transcendent talent. He's every bit as good as advertised. He can do so much on the basketball floor. He's definitely more of a scorer than Lonzo. They're both very disruptive defensively. But there's an aggression to LaMelo's game. Uh, and, and to me, he is the, the, the bigger star of the two brothers. All right, Richard, you agree? No, I, I completely agree. I, I disagree a little bit when he when, when, when JJ says that they're built for short-term success mm. because I do believe that the Bulls have a young core. Mm -hmm. Lonzo is young. I know DeMar is older, but Zach Levine is young. Vucevic isn't 30. So when you look at this team and you're just saying like, okay, like short-term, long-term, I think everything in the success kind of range is about five to seven years. Right. And I think that the Chicago Bulls are built for long-term success because as DeMar kind of fades, you would imagine that Zach Levine or some of these young players can continue to grow. But yes, I agree with him when I say that LaMelo Ball, he is all box office. He is one of those guys that will be the favorite